So one of my favorite days to preach is actually today. Uh, because it's the last Sunday of 2019. Can you guys believe that? I mean, where has this year gone, right? So it's the last Sunday of 2019. Uh, and I love it because it's usually the end of something good. And it's the start of something great. So we believe that 2020 is going to be an amazing year, a year of abundance, uh, a year of blessing. So we believe that God is going to do something amazing. Come on, I'll clap myself today while I'm here. So if you're like me, then you probably end the year on a threat. I mean, that's how I am usually. Uh, but this year in particular, 2019, has really kicked my butt. I mean, it's been one of the hardest years, if not the hardest year of all time. So for the first time ever, I have actually found myself with some uh, physical challenges. Uh, I have actually always prided myself on being healthy. And I mean, I was so arrogant, you can say, that I was so prideful of just being healthy that I used to talk smack to my wife. You know, I used to say stuff like, you see that? I never get sick. That's my light and blood in me, baby. I never get sick. See? What flu shot? I don't need no flu shot. I own the flu. Like, I used to say just silly stuff like that, you know, um, uh, but this year has just been very difficult. And I remember um, I always had this one goal in mind. I, you know, I, I, for as long as I can remember, I always wanted to run a marathon. I never really had the courage just to start training for it, right? I always thought about it. I always dreamed it, and I always put it on hold. Well, this year, back in the beginning, uh, I said, you know what? This is the year. I'm going to launch. I'm going to do something. Uh, I'm going to try to run a marathon, so let me start training. Uh, so, um, you know, I started just going out and, and doing some things just to get me ready. Just the thought of running 26 miles just, just gets me going, right? Uh, and there's two marathons that I wanted to run. The New York City Marathon and the Brooklyn Marathon. I'm sorry, the Boston Marathon. Why New York City? Because I just imagine just going through the streets of Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, not Staten Island, because we don't care about Staten Island, but just going through the streets and just like waving at people and like, hey, cool, you know, like just everybody just kind of like cheering you on. And then, of course, Boston, because, well, two, I'm a Jets fan and I'm a Yankees fan. So there you go. You know, I just want to wear my Yankees. I'll probably get like a half Yankees, half Jets jersey and just run through Boston with that. See, you know what people think about that. So you know, I always had those thoughts. So, um, you know, I started going to just train, and I don't know what you want to call it. If you want to call it a midlife crisis or whatever it is, but that was my goal. That's what I wanted to do, just run a marathon. Um, so today I want to talk to you about running your marathon of, in life, your own marathon, right? And I want to talk to you specific, specifically about revving up your life to run your marathon. I want to go quickly into the book of 2 Timothy you can follow along with me. Just let me give you a little background of what's going on. Timothy, you know, Paul is talking to Timothy. And Paul, before he says his last words, Paul gives him a charge. Timothy, uh, my son, uh, my spiritual son, my protege, just preach the word in all time, in season and out of season. Just believe and preach the word no matter what may come against you. So this is what he's preparing him for. Paul has gone through everything in life. He's near the end of the road. And this is what Paul says. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. So he basically knew. Um, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. So Paul is basically saying, Timothy, I've run this race. I completed, I finished, I set out to do what I did, what I wanted to do in my life, and I did it. It is, it is all done. Now it's your turn to run the race, right? So he's nearing the end of his life, his ministry. He knows this. He gives his final charge to Timothy, uh, and he tells him to preach at all times. See, Paul knew one thing. But even at the end of his life, he knew that he had one final maybe strength left in him and whatever he did he was going to rev it up he was going to give it all leave it all on the playing field even though he was nearing the end of his life he was in prison for the second time he was about to lose his life he wasn't coming out of this one if you go back in scripture it teaches us that he was in prison twice he came out the first time but he wasn't coming out of this one and he knew that see 
I have a friend that I grew up with. Uh, we actually, we were in youth ministry. I was his youth leader. And he was sent to prison during his teenage years. He was there for a very long time. He came out about a year or so ago. And he posted this message this week on his social media. He said, I woke up this morning in my bed, not in a cell, not in a casket, not in a hospital. So I have to thank God for another day. So the thing is that most of us would agree that we don't want to be in prison. I mean, does anybody want to be in prison here today? No, right? Nobody wants to be in a hospital. So that's what I thought. Nobody wants to be in prison. But see, Paul has a different uh, DNA built in him. He was glad to be in prison. He actually rejoiced to be in prison because he knew that his prison was being, bringing life to other people. So he was preaching even through his prison. It's hard to explain, but I know that, that Paul was glad because his time was coming and he knew that his time would soon be up for him to be with his master. Now many of us can live life like that. Most of us worry about what tomorrow brings, what may come in front of us. If you're like me, you're probably worried about what next year may bring. I mean, I, I always get this, you know. Uh, I'm always worrying about what was coming tomorrow, what's coming next year, what's coming 10 years from now. So today, on this last Sunday, let's just pause for a while, 2019. I mean, it's been an amazing year. It's been hard for some of us, but it's been great for others probably. But today, I want to share with you some principles that will launch you into 2020 with new energy, with new strength, so that you can conquer whatever may come against you in 2020. See, I believe this, that you should run your own race. Everybody needs to run their own race. See, Paul knew this. Even though he was nearing the end of his life, he knew that on his last days, he had to leave it all on the playing field, everything that he had. Now, wouldn't it be amazing if we can just get to heaven one day? Can you imagine? I mean, I could, I could imagine heaven, right? I love what Pastor Todd says. Most of us would probably just be glad that we made it, you know, but if we can make it, and we face maybe uh, Peter or, or Paul or Matthew or Luke or whoever is there. And we, we go to the pearly gates and they ask us this question. We can honestly say, I left it all on the playing field. I gave it my all. Each and every day, I try my best. And that's what God wants us to do. Each and every day, at the end of, the, of every day, did you try your best? Did you give it all to Jesus? And sometimes we get maybe sidetrack with that what 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 does that mean does does that mean that i have to bring you know all these all these people and save them what it means is that you simply try your best whatever you're called to do just try your best don't try to be someone else run your own race the problem is too many people just get stuck trying to compete with other people try to run somebody else's race run your own race. I'll give you some examples. Run your own race, right? This is you trying to be someone else. Run your own race. Oh, I should have run a marathon by the time I was 30 years old. Guilty. Okay. Oh, I should have been married with kids by now. Why isn't my business or my career taken off as I thought it would by now? See, I got one simple question for you. Who are you competing with run your own race run your own race don't worry about what the other person is doing what the other person has what the other person may do just worry about running your own race don't worry if you don't have any kids now maybe they're in their sixth child trust me when i say this now, i know i'm probably gonna hear this from this but having kids is overrated you know sorry for all the kids in the room and you're laughing because it's true. I'm just joking, guys. I'm joking. But, you know, the truth is that I love, I love my kids. I love having kids. I actually have three and a half kids. My last one counts for another half. So, you know, it's great. But sometimes we just get stuck in this competition that we want to be better or have more or have this, you know. And I run into people that have this all the time. But, you know, you have to worry about running your own race. I like what Paul said, said in uh, Acts chapter 20 this is what he writes however i consider my life worth nothing to me 
My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Remember, it's all about what your, your own race that you're running. You're not competing with anyone else but yourself. I love hearing stories about athletes. You ask, okay, who's your biggest competitor? Myself. Who do you want to be better than? Myself. What do you want to achieve? You know, something great. But they always recognize that it's something that they have to run themselves. And I'm sorry to disappoint some of the really ultra competitive athletic people in the room and the wannabe athletes in the room. And I'm going to disappoint you right now. But you're not competing for the first place. That's not what you're competing for. See, this is not the race that we run. So you're competing to finish the race, to complete the task, to be a breathing, living example of Jesus to everybody that comes in contact with you. So that's the race that we're running. You know, as I was growing up, I remember that uh, I grew up in a Spanish Pentecostal church, right? I grew up in a Spanish Pentecostal church, and awesome. We have four-hour services, you know, uh, skip lunch. Crazy, then we had to come back. So I remember growing up in a Pentecostal church, Spanish Pentecostal, that you have to be perfectly holy to be saved. I mean, they didn't say it, obviously, but, you know, it was kind of one of those unwritten codes that you had to be perfectly holy to be saved. So I remember, I, you know, I just used to repent all the times. If I can tell you how many times I repented, I mean, it was a daily basis thing. If I, you know, anything that I, if I went to the bathroom, I had to repent. Like, it was crazy, you know? And thank God that I move way past that now because I've actually learned how to reread Scripture to realize that God, you know, He is glorified through every one of your weaknesses, through your vulnerabilities. And I love that part because if I'm vulnerable, that means that I'm just leaving room, I'm leaving space for God to be glorified Himself. If I'm weak, that means that God is going to show off. So just leave room for God. So I love it, you know. Uh, when you can really understand that when you are weak, God is stronger. See, God is being glorified through your weakness, church. So you don't have to try super hard and, you know, try to be, quote, unquote, holy, you know, and uh, try to repent 100 times a day for every sin that you commit. I mean, that's old, you know. But you just need to understand that God is there with you. And so when you are weak, He is stronger. He is lifting you up when you're going through something maybe you're going through some pain god is there to lift you up when you're going through a struggle god is there right with you even though you can't see him he's working oh man i just quote it right now even though when he's there he's working keep pushing keep believing keep reaching rev it up believe that god is about to do something amazing something great in your life that everything that the enemy tried to take away from you God is going to give it back to you see I believe that God has called you for something great I also believe this that your time is now your time is not yesterday or the day before your time is now I have three children beautiful children my youngest one his name is Liam he's the one that counts for half by the way his favorite wrestler when he was younger was John Cena. Okay, and, and it was so cool because I trained him pretty well, you know, and um, I used to practice with him. Like, big kid, and, you know, I'm, I'm a little kid at heart. So I used to practice with him, and we used to try to do, figure out as many as you can't see me that you can think of. So we would do the face, we would do the back of the head. Then I'm like, what, you, what else you got, man? What else you got? He's like, oh, that, I got the knee one. I'm like, what? What is that? You know, like he would just come out with these silly, silly things that he would do, just trying to show off, you can't see me. But one of the things that he loved to say was, my time is now. And he would get like really confident with that, my time is now. But see, he would get a little cocky, and that was a problem. He would get a little cocky. And he would say stuff like, my time is now, your time was yesterday. I was like, oh, whoa, cool, chill out there, you know? My time is now. Your time is never. I'm like, yo, that was good, man. Good job. Come, give me another one. So he would just come up with these creative stuff, right? See, many people fail to realize this, that your time is now. Your time is now. When you train for a race, you train to win 
now. See, I don't ever expect to win a marathon in life. That is way past my time now. I'm not going to win it. Seriously. I mean, honestly, I'm not going to go to the desert and train to win a, a marathon. Like, my wife wouldn't even let me go there, you know. So you're not going to train, you know, but your time is now. Some people simply train to finish the race. See, in this race of life, you don't train to be first, church. You train so that you can finish strong. Everyone can obtain this price in heaven. It is promised for you. It is given to you. That's the beauty of this race. That's the beauty of this race that we run. This is what Paul says. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. Church, run your race so that you can finish strong. Run your race so that you can obtain your prize. Maybe 2019 was a rough year for you. Trust me, I've been there. But run your race so that you can win. If you made it this far, that means that there's plan and purpose for your life. That means that God is not done with you yet. That means that there's something great. You just got to believe it. You just got to reach it. You're still standing. Because there's plan over your life. See, the enemy wants to destroy everything. He wants to sidetrack you. He wants to distract you. Because he knows the potential that is inside each one of you. This is your time. Grab a hold of his promises. Grab a hold of your calling. Your time is now. I, I disagree with Liam. Your time was not yesterday. Your time is now. See, that's what the enemy wants. For you to think that your time was yesterday. Maybe to live in the glory of your yesterday. I, I know we ran into those people. You know, they used to play maybe football or sports in high school. And 20 years later, they're still living off their glory days. Like, oh, when I used to play, I'm like, really? That was like 20 years ago, you know? Like, you can't live like that. Now, can you guys imagine Paul giving this charge to Timothy and just saying, you know, just, just, just being living in the glory of his yesterday, giving him, tell, telling him about all his accomplishment and everything that he's done and maybe his failure? That's not what he does. If you go back to the Bible verse that we read, this is what Paul says, for I am present i am already being poured out like a drink offering verse 7 i have present fought the good fight i have finished the race i have kept the faith paul is basically saying i am here today i am standing strong i am focused i believe that today is the day today is the day promise he's so focused on his present that he doesn't have time to think about his past celebrate your present celebrate your time this is your time I don't know if you can say it with me but say it with me say this is my time believe it say it this is my time with a little bit more energy this is my time with some Puerto Rican baby at the end this is my time baby okay well you guys need a little bit of work we'll try with that one more time this is my time baby that's what I'm talking. Okay, you passed. Joanne, how are we doing right there? All right, cool. This is my time, baby. You know, this is your time. And the enemy is going to try to do everything that he can to try to distract you. You know, as I was preparing this message, I was excited. Monday, you know, Monday morning, I'm working. I'm like, man, this is good. So I'm, I'm preparing this message. Tuesday comes around. It's Christmas Eve. So, you know, everything stops for Christmas Eve. It's crazy, especially if you're Latin. You know, everything. It's all about Christmas, right? So Christmas Eve comes, and then, you know, everything is cool. We have our Christmas Eve dinner with the family and everything. And then around midnight, I start getting this. My body just shuts down. I go home because I'm not feeling too, too good, 102 fever. And then the next day I wake up, I'm up and down. I go down at one point that I just go to my bed and I never wake up again. I just lay in my bed. Has anybody ever been so sick, I mean literally so sick, that you're laying in your bed and your bed just feels like quicksand? I mean, you try to lift up your arm and it just comes right back down, right? You try to lift up your leg and I'm like, oh, I got to go, I got to go. Like, you know, and that's how I felt on Christmas Day. I got so sick. 
But I knew that, you know, something is, is not right. Like, I knew that there's a message that you needed to hear today. You needed to hear that whatever Satan or the enemy may try to throw against you, you needed to hear that God is going to reverse that and he's about to do something great in your life. He's going to turn it around for your good. So believe with me, church, today that nothing that can come against you will destroy you because God is greater, because he's stronger. So I started feeling better on Christmas evening, thank God. See, I believe that this is your time, church. This is your time. Many of you maybe have been doubting yourselves for a while. Maybe you're like me and you've been wanting to run this marathon for who, long, who knows how long you could remember. You've been wanting this, but you've been doubting yourself for a while if you could do it. Maybe you've had a dream that has been put on hold for a while. Your time is now. Maybe you have unachieved goals, things that you wanted to do. Your time is now. Maybe there's unanswered prayers and you've been praying, you've been asking God, God, when is, when is my answer going to come? When is my miracle going to come? Your time is now. Maybe there's a marriage in conflict. You're at that point where you're about to sign those papers. Your time is now. Maybe it's a rebellious son or daughter. Your time is now. Maybe it's health problems. Your time is now. This is your time, church. Your time is now for you to walk into the miracle that God has stored for your life. <laughs> Finish strong. Maybe 2019 was not an easy year. Hasn't been. But finish strong. Maybe you say, Pastor, it's only one Sunday. No. See, you're not getting it. See, it's only one Sunday that can launch you into your destiny in 2020. So believe today that when you trust and you believe in God, that you, nothing that can ever come against you will conquer you. Believe that there's some greatness in you in 2020. Yes, today is the last Sunday of 2019, but I believe that 2020 is going to be the greatest year in the history of your life, in the history of Church Unleashed that you've ever seen before, simply because that's the God that we serve. Let's finish 2019 strong. And I also believe this. See, many times we face challenges, difficulties, and we can, either, we can either face this two ways. One, we can let it conquer us. Two, we can believe that every challenge that may come against us is simply launching us into our destiny. That's the mentality that we need to have. So I also believe that a bump is simply a push. See, a bump is not meant to stop you. A bump is simply meant so that it can launch you and push you into your destiny. Jesus, he's preaching and he's nearing the end of his ministry. And he gives this promise to his followers. This is what Jesus says. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. Now let me ask you, is there anybody that believes in Jesus? So this message is for you. And they will do even greater things than these. Now, I don't know about you, but that's like, I mean, really, Jesus? I mean, you raised Lazarus from the dead? You know, you uh, uh, healed the, 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 the lame beggar and you did this? I mean, are you serious? You turned, uh, you, you turned water into wine and, you know, you fed the 5,000? Like, seriously? Are you kidding me? But this is what he says. They will do even greater things than this. And how encouraging is it to know that the greatest teacher to have ever lived will have so much trust on us to believe in us that we can conquer everything because he knew that we have a plan and we have a purpose. You have a calling, you have potential, and a bump doesn't need to stop you, church. It simply needs to push you into your destiny. I remember as I started running in Jones Beach training back in March. I remember I'm running, and, you know, I was so excited. You know, worked that out in my schedule that, you know, three days a week I'm going to start running. And I go, you know, first two weeks are good. And then I'm running. 
as I'm running, you know, I start feeling this pain, my right knee, you know, and I just stretched it a little and pushed it to the side. And, you know, I was born in the 80s, grew in the 90s. So you remember those uh, videos where, you know, Arnold drinking raw egg and building muscle. So, you know, no pain, no gain, right? So, you know, I, I start stretching and I start running and I do one of those and I start running. I'm like, God, you got this, right? As I run, the pain just becomes more severe. And I literally start yelling, no pain, no gain. And I'm running. I'm like, no pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. So I run. I hit my mark. And then look back. I got to run back. Are you serious? You know? And I'm running back, and I'm no pain, no gain. By that time, I'm already slowing down. You know, it's not the same. So, you know, I stop running. And then... You know, I'm thinking this pain is going to go away. Two weeks later, I see that this pain has spread to different joints throughout my body, you know, my arm and, you know, uh, my other knee. So I start, you know, just wondering what's going on. So I go see the doctor. Long story short, uh, I go see a rheumatologist, and they can't diagnose me through the, you know, the blood test, but uh, I get diagnosed because of the symptoms that I have uh, arthritis. So, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm actually pretty bad at lying. My wife can tell you. You know, I'm not a good liar. Every pastor shouldn't be a good liar, right? So, the truth is that some days are better than other days. And the truth is that some days are simply too painful. The truth is that some days I have cried myself to sleep with so much pain. The truth is that some days I don't even want to get up to go to work. Like, that's the truth. But the truth is also that no matter the pain, no matter the difficulty, no matter the struggle, the challenge, I will always trust Jesus. Always, always, always trust Jesus. And I haven't stopped believing in my miracle, and I won't, because I trust Jesus for my salvation. People say, well, how are you going to run a marathon with arthritis? I'm like, I don't know, God is going to heal me. I believe it. <laughs> See, I believe that as long as I have breath, I will keep fighting. I will keep pushing. I will keep believing. Because see, a bump is simply a push to your destiny. I don't think my time is up. I think my time is now. I should believe that my time it's now that Jesus is about to do something great. So if you have a plan and a purpose, just believe it with me. Your time is now. God is about to do something great in your life. Grab a hold of that promise. That house you've been praying for, it's yours. That husband you've been praying for, come on, single ladies, it's yours. Fellas, God will give you the right man, not any man. Infertility. God will open up your womb right now in the name of Jesus. That healing you've been praying for, it's there. It's right in front of you. This is our time. This is our season. If you believe it with me, church, just stand to your feet and just give a clap offering to God. Come on. Ten second praise right now. Ready? Come on. Ten second praise. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Jesus, hallelujah. This is your time. I'll end with this. Michael Phelps, we all know Michael Phelps, the most decorated Olympian and greatest swimmer of all time. What people don't know is that he was born with some challenges. At the young age of nine, he was diagnosed with ADHD. But thanks to his mother, he was able to overcome some of these challenges. She began working closer with Michael to get him all the attention that he needed. Whenever a teacher would say, Michael can't do this, 
she will counter with, what are you doing to help him? When young Michael was having difficulty in math, she hired a tutor while encouraging him to use word problems tailored to his interests. How long would it take to swim 500 meters if you swim 3 meters per second? Michael went on to win 28 medals in total between 2004 and 2016. 23 of them gold. He also holds 7 world records, including the 200-meter butterfly and the 4 by 100 meter freestyle relay. And this is what Michael says. Nobody's going to put a limit on what I, I'm doing. I'm going to do what I want to do, when I want to do it. This is how I have always worked. Church, nobody can put a limit on what you can do. The enemy may try to put something to hold you back, but nobody can put a limit on what you are able to accomplish. Come on, church. There is greatness inside each one of you. There's purpose. There's destiny. And God is about to do something amazing, something great. If you can today, just close your eyes and bow your heads.